Hello and welcome to another episode of Not Too Deep. I'm your host, Grace Ann Helbig. Today we have Willem back for another round of Not Too Deep. And this time Willem is joined by none other than Laganja Estranja. And this is a beautiful uh, episode. We get into all of it. You never know what to expect when Willem is a guest, and that's exactly what you can expect on this episode. We talk about what Willem's been up to since A Star is Born. We talk about Laganja and her impact in the cannabis community and how she's... Ugh, she, big plans. Big plans for what she's building in the cannabis world. I'm so excited for you guys to hear about it. Also, how they've been uh, doing drag and supporting each other and how you can support your fellow drag queens during this quarantine. They're getting creative, y'all, and it's something to see. Ugh. And not only is... Uh, are we all seeing what Laganja has been up to doing live drag shows from her driveway? But Willem is her neighbor. So you get two for the price of one in this episode. Tip them both at the end. Enjoy this episode of Not Too Deep with Willem and Laganja. <laughs> Okay, thank you guys for being here. I mean, it looks like you just rolled out of bed, both of you. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Simple day glam. Yeah. Uh, well, first, first of all, I have to ask you, how are you doing amidst all of this nonsense? Uh, yeah, cool. Got I'm, it. I've been having a hard time trying to find my happy. So I've been saying no to a lot of like online drag stuff and like, um like interviews and lives just because like I don't want to be fake right now so I'm just trying to like be really honest with people that I'm scared as fuck um yeah. I miss the dicks and um subscribe to my YouTube channel <laughs> I appreciate the honesty because I feel like there must be a little bit of pressure to have to figure out how to continue to perform with everything that's happening and to your credit, I've been looking at all of your Instagrams and YouTube videos and everything. You guys have been adapting amazingly. Well, well I, I mean, Gonja's we're... the one. Gonja's <laughs> the one for all of that. Her performances, <laughs> she's really, I, I'm, I'm sure that she's gained thousands of new fans just from the quarantine shit she's been putting out. Me watching over the fence with like popcorn, I'm like, I... yes! <laughs> the pussy! Neighborhood Watch is coming around saying, did you lose a cat? I was like, no, work the pussy! <laughs> it's her pussy. Yeah, I mean, I just feel really lucky that what we do, what our art form is, translated into the digital platforms. I think that, you know, because we do have following on Instagram and all the social media, we're lucky in the way that we can put a show on our backyard, like put a show on in our backyard and still receive tips and donations from dolls and doll fans. So, you know, I think it's a blessing. I feel like, yes, it's challenging, but it's for me, at least it's been fun because for instance, I can't bring a car into the club, but in my driveway, it's no problem. So I'm trying to like use it in creative ways. Oh, I saw, yeah, your entrance of you just driving in on your car in your driveway. I couldn't even brain that as a possibility of something that you could do during quarantine. So kudos to you for being so creative and how you're able to still perform for people live. I mean, it's That's what really happens amazing. when you smoke weed. <laughs> A box. A box. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, so I want to know, first of all, um, what is the two of you's origin story? Do you remember when you first met each other? <laughs> she remembers because I was mean. <laughs> oh no, what happened? Well, no, actually the bitch. <laughs> no, the very the very first time we met was actually at Bordner's right next to your studio. Okay. And I was with my dear friend who's no longer with us, Bobby Webster. And I bumped into you and you asked me my drag name and I told you that it was Laganja and you were like, oh, that's a clever name. So that's why the next time when I saw your bitch ass and you were like, huh, what's your name? I'm like, girl, you said you like my name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so shady. <laughs> but it was good. You know, I, I definitely, maybe I got hazed, but I think it's just because like, you know, people who do drag really care about this art form. And when a newbie comes in, it's natural to like, yeah, you know, pick on them a little bit. So I think it was oh, all no, in good I'll fun. tell you the real story. It was yeah. because someone said you slept with my other friend's boyfriend. Oh, yeah. Well, I did. <laughs> okay. I tried to sleep with him, too. Why was I mad at you? Why am I a hater? 
Who knows? But the good, the good news is we got over it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it feels like I mean, it, it's almost like an indirect sign of love to to take the time to make fun of someone, right? And like you said, like a form of hazing. At what yeah. point? Does it become, uh, do you break through the hazing and there's like an acceptance of, okay, you're cool now? If the person cries, that means they could be your friend. Um, <laughs> if you break them, basically. Me and, Detox, me and Detox tried to do it to Misty Violet and she wouldn't cry. So we're just like, okay, <laughs> you could be our friend now. Because <laughs> she was our understudy in a play. Oh, amazing. We already gotten one person fired from it, so. <laughs> <laughs> What's one more? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Willem, what's the post A Star Is Born life for you been like? Um, I still Has anything know. changed? No. <laughs> I say yes to the gigs that I'm offered and um, I try to create more of my own. I've gone mm -hmm. on a lot of meetings. No one signed me for acting yet still. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, which is crazy for me because I thought I was really funny in the movie. Um, yeah, you I, were. Thanks. Yes. I, I did get an agent out of it for like reality stuff and like that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm working on different shows and hoping something comes down the line that, you know, is fun and cute and is work, but nothing's changed really. Really? Well, I mean, maybe that's a blessing in disguise. You never oh, know. I'm friends with Lady Gaga now. Wait, never mind. <laughs> yeah, that's a oh, that part. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that, a... that's the best part. I really like that one. I get to go to a lot of fun parties. Amazing. And Laganja, you're uh, massive in this dance world. Uh, what? And I was just watching a little bit of the documentary of the um, the international, like, uh, what do you describe it as? The dance kind of like curated and crafted piece that you did? I'm not for sure which one. Are you talking about Laganja's dance school or the thing I did with Young Arts? The thing with Young Arts. Okay, yeah, that was a, it was a grant I was given as an artist to come in for three weeks and create a piece of art, basically. It was like an open workshop. I just happened to take it really, really seriously. So I created like a 40 minute uh, installation art piece inside of the Jewel Box, which is a building uh, that Young Arts owns in Miami uh, and had audience members 40 at a time walk through this kind of experience that really explored gender. So it started with Adam and Eve and then it broke it down all the way until we ended in sort of a a room that represented being non-binary, which is what I consider myself to be gender fluid. So that was a really cool, a really cool thing that I got to do because that's my real passion. As much as I love drag, uh, I got my BFA in dance and choreography. So that's mm -hmm. always been the end goal with this is to have my own dance company and to be the artistic director choreographing and, you know, touring the company around the world. And then maybe if I'm still feeling and I can go to all these gay clubs that I've made connections <laughs> at, I put on a little after party, you know, <laughs> double the booking mama, double the pressure. <laughs> but that's amazing. What kind of, I mean, how do you even approach a project like that? Because it does seem very different than what you do in Dragon. Like you said, you were taking it much more seriously. I mean, uh, is that a totally different brain than you use when you create a, a drag performance? Um, I would say yes and no. I think mm -hmm. a lot of it has to do with my training. As I said, I, I never really intended on being a drag queen. I always say that drag chose me um, because I really did. I just wanted to be a choreographer. That's what I went to study at the California Institute of the Arts. Um, but what's been really cool about the whole drag process is it's taught me how to do makeup and wigs and costuming and all of these you know, skills that I think I will end up using as the creative director of my dance company. So for me, I try to keep the brains like fluid as well. Just like yeah. my gender mama, I just try to keep it all as one simultaneously hamster wheel that's circling. Cause I think everything is, is counterbalancing and talking to one another. So it's not like, okay, I'm doing drag here. I'm only going to be gay. I mean, I've danced contemporary and drag many times. So mm -hmm. I like to, I like to bend the lines of what is drag, what is dance and try to find somewhere in between. That's really beautiful. Now, speaking uh, of hamsters, it's illegal to own one in Hawaii. Is it? I just learned that yesterday. I am a fucking transvestite snapple cat, bitch. I will give you that. <laughs> you are. <laughs> well, I was going to say, Willem, equally beautiful, you are exploding watermelons on your YouTube channel with rubber bands, which yeah. is also, you know, in and of itself, its own art. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what is an... The you know when you put yourself out there on the internet, how deeply are you taking like suggestions and recommendations from your audiences? Because I assume that that was something recommended for you to do. 
she takes it deep. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Ganja no. Ganja no. Um, I, w- I would say I'm very open to suggestions. I keep saying like I'm almost out of ideas for the internet, but there will always be more ones. And like, I'll see someone do something and I could be like, they faked that. I need to try that. Like, cause I didn't know this watermelon could happen. Like who knew? <laughs> and then, yeah. and then it just started squirting at me a little bit, getting mad. And I was like, Oh, I broke it. Now it's not going to blow up, but I kept doing it. And then it blew up and I was so happy. It was like the best part of my day. And it felt like summer, just it's raining watermelon. Yeah. There was a lot of <laughs> symbolism in that video. I could see a lot of the art about, you know, it mirrors what's happening in society right now. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just like just like the watermelon after quarantine, someone's gonna bust it open. <laughs> uh, also, you're gonna you be on a line outside the house, Gonge. Feel free to take whatever you want. I'm ready. Sign now, me up, Gorge. <laughs> you you live next door to each other. Was this purposeful? I yeah, I definitely texted all my friends and told them, "Hey, there's a place next door. And there's a guest house, and then a front house, and like." I wanted my friends to live there because friends are better. Yeah, of course. It's yeah, better. especially now. Yeah. Neighbors that drag together stay together. It's true. Mm-hmm. Amazing, uh, amazing. And there's uh, a room in the in the front house which might be open, so we're thinking about having a bedroom pageant where we just have people drive by and compete for the spot in the new bedroom. The but you can't fee, see it until you win. Can't see. Uh huh. And the entrance fee is uh, two thousand dollars plus a security deposit first and last. <laughs> <laughs> See, another creative way to thrive in quarantine. Uh, also, Willem, you've been doing Beatdown for how long now? Um, a gazillion 70 years. <laughs> Approximately, um, since 2012. And uh, uh-huh. it, it just really keeps growing and getting worse and then better and more fun. <laughs> and um, I love it because, like, these are videos now that I can, like, shine a light on people, like... Uh, like during the beatdown, I've been showing quarantine videos of girls. So like people could mm-hmm. see it if they miss their lives, be like, go tip this whore. She needs yeah. to help her fix yeah, her. Yeah, Ms. Willem got me tipped, honey. She put my little hot box video in there and the kids went wild. I she, saw that. It's a great way to collaborate. The car window. It was, <laughs> it was like a, a drag queen got put through the mousetrap operation game where it just drops and goes <laughs> and then up and over. That is Laganja. <laughs> I love that. Uh, also, Willem, you have your uh, your makeup line collection, yeah. right? Uh, face and body because uh, there were some issues with the name, apparently. I'm wearing her today, Gorge. <laughs> oh, look at Hashtag so roller cool. rink. So Go- supportive. Roller rink is the one, yeah. Mm-hmm. <gasps> I love it. Now, what is what's the creative process when you go into making products or merch for your, yourselves? Because obviously, makeup is something that you're very knowledgeable about, but it's also a place where people can be really critical. Like, wh- how do you how do you like decide what you're going to make and how you're going to make it? Uh, for me, what I wanted to make for my makeup line was all based on what I used for drag mm-hmm. and how I wanted to make my career as easy and accessible for as long as I wanted to do it without like people being, oh, we're going out of business. You don't have foundation anymore. So I'm doing stuff that mostly you don't need brushes for because I don't think the world needs another palette anywhere. So I do Uh like top coats for lips. I do glitter gels that you could just put over anything. And I do big lashes, just basically the three things you need to get in drag. I think a lash, a lip, and then some glitter and some shine. So I'm concentrating on those and trying to just do stuff that I like. For merch, I usually try to think about other people and what they would want to wear first, but I always try to do merch that I would would at least be happy wearing too. Definitely. And for me, um, what I like to concentrate on is concentrates, you know, THC, (laughs) things that'll get you high. Yeah. So I'm really looking to expand my cannabis lifestyle brand yeah oh well, bitch, i'm going to get my t-shirt hold on it's real cute <laughs> okay meanwhile look Anja, you are you're obviously in the cannabis community which i think is so cool and very important especially for young people to kind of normalize it because i feel like there is such a bizarre stigma around it and there shouldn't be in my opinion was that something that just kind of like naturally fit in your lifestyle? Or is this like, I'm going to be talking about this. I want to do collaborations with pre-rolled joints. Like I want to do this kind of thing. Yeah, it was absolutely a conscious choice. I, I yeah. feel like any good drag queen or beauty queen should have a platform that they stand on that's bigger than themselves. 
And mm-hmm. for me, the reason I chose cannabis is because it really did change my life. Um, you know, I grew up in Texas, Dallas, Texas, where it's very conservative. Cannabis mm-hmm. is seen as the de- devil's lettuce. And so, yeah. you know, I always had a yeah negative stigma of being a, you know, at that time, what I would call a drug user. But it wasn't mm-hmm. until I came to California and I discovered that it really is truly medicinal. I got my medical license at the time under Proposition 215, which is also known as the Compassionate Act, which was actually Perfect. founded founded by the LGBTQ uh, AI plus now community. So wow. I feel like a real sense of um, history or history, if you will, that I need to live up to. And so that's why I try to be very active, not only as a cannabis user and activist, but also as a queer person, because I think there's a lot of space that needs to be cleared in the industry. Unfortunately, it's very homophobic. So mm. right now it's up to individuals such as myself to really, you know, change that and embrace different communities. I think that's fantastic. And I think now more than ever, like you're saying, it's, I know a lot of very uh, anxious people that have dealt with anxiety and things like that, that have found like a lot of safe haven in cannabis and has like expanded their whole, uh, you know, socializing everything about their, their lives. And I think it's so important to just be like, this is a positive product. Uh, Are there any future collaborations in the works on anything? Yeah, uh, I'm definitely doing something with Puffco for the month of Pride. So you'll definitely want to stay tuned to see what exactly that's going to be. And then my partnership with Fruit Slabs is, of course, ongoing. We started a partnership last year during Pride Month, actually, where I created my own individual flavor for the company. So unfortunately, this year, I didn't get to create a new flavor because of COVID. Um, Mm. But we all we still offer it year round. So my flavor that I did last year, which is the Pride Passion, is still available. Bitch, Amazing. I smoked that. I remember that. Yeah, I gave you some. <laughs> that was delicious. It's a little fruit leather, all organic, vegan, gluten-free, and kosher certified. Wow. Oh. That's incredible. I didn't even know that that was possible. Exactly. See, that's why I don't have a lot of products right now is because I only want to put my name on things that are truly, you know, forging new ground. And I think mm-hmm. healthy edibles is totally a way we need to be looking and exploring because- Personally, I don't want to have to eat a brownie every time I want to get medicated. So, you know, our fruit slab is this big. It's 10 milligrams, super easy uh, and healthy. Amazing. Uh, I like this look, Willem. Very nice. Let us see. This is my shirt. It says fear the beard. Yeah. I also did makeup to cover my beard because I had a beard on Drag Race. (laughs) That's amazing. That's amazing. Willem is truly the queen of merch. She has like... (laughs) I mean, these rags, I'm sure you can imagine what they're for. I mean, she's so, she's so smart. It, I mean, you're, there is a demand. So create the supply, right? You call me a man, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> now you guys have such a, uh, a great rapport and support for each other. Uh, is there an etiquette to calling each other out on things? If you see each other sporting a look that, <laughs> isn't what you think they should be doing like how do you how do you do that oh my god <laughs> we would just say it i feel yeah <laughs> it'd be like oh what are you wearing uh-huh. yeah. oh that's oh, an interesting that. big choice that's an interesting <laughs> choice yeah. well, what shoe are you gonna wear with that <laughs> meanwhile she's already wearing a shoe yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, Uh, are there any memories, uh, for better or worse, of the worst looks that you've sported in the past? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh yeah, for sure. I hate, I hated my look on RuPaul's Drag Race for the black and white challenge. I looked insane. Oh really? Yeah. Definitely one of my worst. Great. What? Your promo look? Oh yeah, I liked her. (laughs) You were sickening with the hair. Naked. Naked, I love. I, I bought one of those body strappy things like you're wearing the denim one that you had for my video. Oh, yeah? Remember your garage sale with Gia at WOW? Yeah. And I was filming that day and I literally walked across the street and I was like, well, this will work. And I wore it in the video that day. Gorgeous. Oh, I actually, yeah, the, the strappy denim with the tits. Uh-huh. Loved Amazing. it. Look at that. It's just endless, endless support. Uh, Laganja, you're also um, thriving on TikTok, I hear. <laughs> Is that what's well, happening? I don't know that I would say um, thriving, but I would say slowly gaining momentum, yes. Okay, what are your thoughts on TikTok? I haven't fully immersed myself in that world yet, so 
any advice or any thoughts on it? <laughs> well, I'll be very honest with you. I literally just started TikTok this year because I was one of those people who was like, I'm not getting another app. This is right. so dumb. But a lot of my friends convinced me because I am a dancer and it is so heavily based yeah. in doing dance um, that I should start it. And so naturally when I started it, I just thought it was so silly. It's covered with like, you know, 19 year old boys shirtless thinking they can dance <laughs> hip hop. And yeah. like, just like the most random things that I totally do go down a rabbit hole on. But <laughs> ultimately when I'm filming the TikToks and doing the dances, I have the time of my life. So I oh, have, co you know, kind of committed to the app because especially during quarantine, you know, the days when I don't feel like doing anything, even if I just get out and film a 15 second TikTok, it really mm -hmm. does improve my mood because that's what I, I, I love to do. I love to dance. So I guess All my right. advice to you would be decide like what it is, is going to be your niche because TikTok is very that it's very like you're a dancer or you're a good lip syncer or you're funny at comedy or you work with your mom and you do mom and son skits. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is, it's like very, yeah. it's like YouTube almost where there's kind of okay. genres. So I guess if you wanted to be successful at going viral, I would say to figure out, you know, what is your niche and then to push it. Good to know. Willem, have you gotten into TikTok? No, but I watched Laganja do hers over the fence. She's really good. <laughs> I love, she I was, to, she I really was up on my Jeep to watch her do a toddler's <laughs> video for mask, gloves, face scrub. Oh, yeah. I was just watching. And then I wanted to be like, I wonder if she minds. And then I was going to ask, I hope you don't. And then I'm like, she don't care. Uh, I mean, no, there, you... was, there was one time though, where I was like in my robe. I think I was doing a Beyonce. No, I was doing the JLo challenge, which is really hard. The one she did with uh, the oh, Paris yeah, Global when it choreography. Oh, yeah. And I hadn't learned it yet. So she made me nervous because I was still trying to learn it. <laughs> oh my God. I know. Just shoot at me with like a super soaker. Go. I feel like you're just being Wilson from Home Improvement, just like yes! standing over the fence the whole time. Yes, we were just talking about that yesterday. Instead of Wilson, it's Willem. But uh, she gives full face. You know, he always only did like that, right? Right, right, no, she right. She gives right. full face fantasy. I showed oh. you this lip by cover by shop suck less face and body. Whatever the fucking name is. <laughs> But that's what I love. I love that you keep in all the imperfections, all the bloopers, all like the things that you fuck up and it just adds to the whole brand. It's fuck really up. great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, I have more questions for you. Then we have a ton of Twitter questions for you. So we'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. Not Too Deep. What's crazy? Do you have a bunch of stuff laying around the house that you don't use? You probably definitely do. And we've all had the time to just stare at it and wonder how and why it got into our locations to begin with. I'm talking about like kids' old baseball gloves or those jeans that you wore once or never wore and you had high hopes for, but now they're in the back of the closet or like a phone that's in a drawer somewhere. We all have a phone drawer. Well, there's an app that you can use to sell all of this stuff. It's called Mercari. Mercari is the selling app that makes it fast and easy to sell almost anything. It's super simple. You just take a couple pictures of your stuff, you add a description, and bam, your item is listed. And once it's sold, Mercari emails you a shipping label and you just stick it on and send it off. There's no meetups. There's no hassles. And with millions of people using the Mercari app in all 50 states, your stuff will really sell. And the app has over 600,000 reviews on the App Store with an average 4.8 star rating. So why not give it a try? Super easy, no meetups, no hassles. And you can get rid of all that stuff that makes you go, why? Every time you look around, don't let that stuff you don't use go to waste. Sell or buy almost anything on Mercari. You can find Mercari on the app stores or on Mercari.com. That's M-E-R-C-A-R-I, Mercari, the selling app. Not too deep. Right now is a time that all of us are struggling with some sort of stress or anxiety or isolation or depression, and you're not alone. We're all going through it. And if you're curious in something that can help you out, BetterHelp. BetterHelp offers online licensed professional counselors who can help. Their counselors specialize in issues like depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBTQ plus matters, grief, self-esteem, and more. You can connect with your counselor in a safe and private online environment 
Anything you share is confidential. You fill out a questionnaire to help assess your needs and you get matched with a counselor in less than 24 hours. And from there, you can easily schedule secure video or phone sessions with your therapist plus exchange unlimited messages. I've had friends that use this app and love it so much, especially because you have the ability to text with your counselor. Uh, Everything's super confidential and super convenient to you wherever you are, however you want to communicate. And if for any reason you're unhappy with your counselor, you can request a new one at any time for no additional charge. It's an affordable option and you guys will get 10% off your first month of this already affordable option with the discount code GRACE. That's BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash GRACE. Discount code GRACE. Talk to a therapist online and get help. Okay, Laganja, because you're in the dance world, what are your thoughts on, on dance moms? I mean, I love it. I'm a huge supporter. You're talking about the television show or the actual people? I'm I'm talking more like the actual people that oh outside don't, of love the TV so show. Yeah, don't love <laughs> okay. it so much. Don't love it so much. Love the TV show, but as someone who did teach at a dance studio for ten years, um, uh-huh. mothers are very intense. I've definitely had you know a few across the many years that I taught. I taught for ten years that I loved and still keep in touch with. But for the most part, I found them to be you know overbearing, very intense. Like if you were to have mm-hmm. a private, they would want to sit in and watch to like oh. side coach. So, you know, I mean, I had a stage dad, but he was nowhere near like a stage mom. They're, they're wow. truly their own special creatures. And so they're, they're real. They exist in real oh, life yes. and they are as intense as they're portrayed on television. Mothers living through their daughters. Yes, that exists, mama. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but it does. Don't talk about Alyssa like that. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why you can't take Will of Nowhere. <laughs> uh, do you share a memory uh, that you guys have had together that stands out above anything else? Like, what's the best memory or experience that you've had together? Mean gays, right? Mean gays. We 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 did a play together with Kimchi and Peaches Christ and a bunch of really cool drag performers. Um, in like six cities in 2019. Wow, what was that experience like? Well, she was Regina George, but named of course, Willem George. And I was playing Karen. I forget what my, what was my name? I don't know. Uh, Did did y'all call? Laganja Smith, Laganja Smith. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And And it was so fun because I- Katie Heron and like, we would just go to different cities and like, get high and then eat and then do this fun show. I got to do a Christmas number, even though it was like February, March, but everybody lived. That's Ganja, perfect. It was weird because I didn't really know Ganja and Kim that well going in. And like both of them just astounded me. Uh, Ganja is just a natural performer and she has that it. And then Kim Chi is just so hilarious and shady. She is the shadiest elephant rhino beast in the room. Really? <laughs> at all times. Wow. I mean, and yeah. she knows where the best food is. So we oh, did wait. eat really well because I would make sure everyone was medicated and then we'd eat. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that you guys are taking care of each other. We um, had to because it was boo boo in some towns and we were like, there's no <laughs> heat in this theater and it's oh. winter. No, in no Chicago, thank you. we were dying. Yes. Oh. What's the, because you travel so much and a lot of the, the shows that you do, like you said, are on the road. Are, what's the biggest thing you've learned or that you now like bring to prepare yourself for that kind of intensity? <laughs> extra duct tape. Oh yeah? Yeah, extra duct tape, um, cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these seem like that's a quick survival kit. Yeah, I feel like you just you just learn you have to be really adaptable. So I I bring it all. I mean, yeah. as far as like drag needs go, you know, bring all the wig caps and the, you know, bobby pins and just anything you might need because yeah, you never know what's gonna happen or what's gonna break or if you're late for the costume change or just exactly right. what's gonna happen. Always be prepared. I uh, what a bath mat from a hotel? I learned that from Chad. So you're tight. She so- does. You lay a towel out, girl. <gasps> yeah, that's very smart. And and something get the money first. <laughs> oh, good call. Very, very smart. Yeah, they're looking at you at the end of the night with a fucking W9, and you're like, give me my money. <laughs> <laughs> what, in your opinion, is the biggest amateur mistake people make when they start out in drag? 
<laughs> I'm sure there's a ton. When they think they're so pretty and they don't need to cover their eyebrows. Oh, okay. That was me for a long time. <laughs> I mean, I guess when they try to do the dip and they're not good. Mm. Very fair, very fair. <laughs> yeah. If you're not a dancer, just don't do it, you know, or like really commit to trying. But if you're somewhere yeah. in between and you're sloppy, I get real shaky, nervous for you. <laughs> Uh, Laganja, you also posted a video recently with Gia about being a boss. So what would you say, and Willem, you two, are the keys to being a boss? Saving your money, getting someone to do your taxes. Oh, good call. And not mixing, um, you know, your dick with your, with your pleasure. Really keeping those separate. <laughs> I think that's great. I think those are all really, I think surrounding yourself with smarter people than you. Yes. And yeah, like, very fair. And just like, that's kind of what I've done because I'm good at a lot of things, but I'm not great at anything. Um, so I just have people that are really good at like little other things that can help me in my career. And I just find like, um, being a boss is like also just allowing other people to create around you and trusting that you hire the right person and made the right decision. And like, you know, uh, it's collaborative for me. Being able to communicate. I think that's so true though. It's all about communication yeah. if you're a boss because you have to like pass on tasks to other people. So you have to be very clear in what you want and how mm -hmm. to like get that from the right kind of people. So that also goes into, like you said, who you hire, having mm -hmm. those the right people around you. I love being challenged by people too. I'm, I'm all for that. And that's honestly one of the reasons when I moved in next door to Willem that I was like, this will be really good for me because Willem is always creating her own book, her own makeup line, her own, her own, her own. And as someone who is trying to be an entrepreneur in that way and not just follow in the footsteps of all the other drag race girls, it does. Mm -hmm. It pushes you. And I love that for sure. Amazing. Oh yeah. Just a quick as second. She reads to her oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are we not doing books on tape? But I'm Nina West now. Let me read this one. <laughs> Well, what's something, what's like a dream product or a uh, show or a creative piece that you haven't worked on yet that would be a dream to be working on or producing? Hmm. I definitely would love to have my own dispensary run by drag queens. That That's would also amazing. Have, that That's would a also great have idea. A, you know, a stage and lounge area. Of course, you know, we just got those licenses last year. There's about eight that were selected out of thousands of applicants. So wow. it's going to be a long process before I believe that could really happen for me, but I would love to have that kind of a, a safe space for people who are in the queer community could come and consume cannabis and see drag shows and, you know, have it be giving back to LGBT, you know, organizations. And that's definitely something that I continue to work on, of course. That's so smart because so many yeah. drag queens hide drugs in their wig too. <laughs> <laughs> no hide policy here just out in the open lay it out i think that's a great idea i really hope that that comes to fruition after all of this i think that's fantastic i would go oh, um i feel like you've kind of answered this question but what do you watch or what do you consume to relax so like what are you what do you look at on the internet what are the things that like when you have a second to yourself that you just like escape to? Um, if anything, like I'm obsessed with reality television. So that's my big go-to. I'm, I'm kind of a workaholic who doesn't watch much TV. So this quarantine has made me catch up on stuff. Uh, I really like superhero stuff. Watchmen's like the best thing I've ever seen. I've watched it twice. Yeah. Uh, the Boys was good. I'm obsessed with Insecure. Mm -hmm. um what else yeah comedies i watched dave Chappelle a lot i just put that on family guy american dad um nice and, uh, and wow we show. we could not have more opposite taste i'm like i know what some of these shows are but i don't watch any of these that is crazy oh really oh, what what is tale too what <laughs> what a What'd spectrum you is a handmaid's tale mm-hmm Oh, I oh, love yeah. that one. Yeah. That one I watch. I definitely am a Netflix girl. So right now I'm addicted to Hollywood, the Ryan Murphy new series oh, by him. That, that was so good. So okay. good. Uh, I loved Ozarks. I loved, yeah. um, of course, the Tiger King movie. That was awesome. Big thing. 
Um, uh-huh. And then, of course, my my guilty, guilty pleasure right now is Encore on the Disney Plus app. It's about oh, okay. people who are brought back uh, to do their high school musicals again. So a lot yeah. of them are 10, 20 years older, haven't seen each other, used to date. Now they're being confronted. And then they also stage the whole play again. So it's a great, great show. I bought the app literally just for that show. I've heard oh of that God. show. I haven't watched it. Is it. It's not cringy at all. Um, I love reality television like yourself. So I would uh, say, no, you're going to love it. I mean, okay. yeah, they definitely, some of them can't sing and maybe you cringe at that, but to, like, you just feel for them because it's so cool that they're, you know, now nurses and coming back to right. experience this as an adult. I think it's, I don't know. It, it moves me to tears for sure. I'm that girl. Oh, that's very sweet. Okay. So Willem, you've worked with Lady Gaga. It uh, must have been a dream scenario, obviously. Best friends now. Uh, Laganja, who's a dream collaboration for you? Missy Elliott. Really? Yeah, that's my ultimate dream. I, I, that's what I always tell people. I want to be like known as the Missy Elliott of drag because I really do want to make rap music and tour the world shaking my ass. But um, yeah, wow. Missy Elliott, she's always been my hugest inspiration. I have a tattoo of her crown from the Adidas line that was known as Respect Me. And uh, yeah, she's always been someone who I've inspired by because she's able to take pop music, but also have a real message behind it. Uh, for instance, like with Super Duper Freak, when she wore the giant fat suit, making a, you know, uh, commentary on how black female bodies have been hypersexualized. And so there's always something real about her art. And then she's always mm-hmm. able to make it mainstream and poppy. So that's kind of like what I want to do, too. I want to I want to be intellectual, but I want other people to still enjoy the art. And I think that's what she's done. Wow, what a great answer. I would never have connected those dots. That's so cool. I'll be honest, I studied a course in it in college. um, And so that's also why I have that knowledge is because (laughs) I was taught it. I was taught it. I'm a white person. Are you kidding? I didn't know that shit. But luckily, I am interested in other subjects. And in school, I, I studied it. And I wrote my thesis on Missy Elliott and why I think that she's like such a cool pop star. Wow, you wrote a whole thesis about Missy Elliott. That's amazing. I sure did. That's incredible. Uh, I'm sure you've all been asked a billion times, but what's the first thing you'll do when this is all over? It The thing that you can do. I mean, uh, for me, I'm like on the fence about I don't even know what it is. I don't even know what I'll feel comfortable like getting into after this. But I'm curious if you're eager to do to perform, to travel, to literally just like walk down the street. I don't know. I'm doing three things. Dick, dick, dick. I knew it. I was like, I bet Willem's answer is similar to mine. (laughs) Hers was just three times. Mine was, I was just going to say dick, but I like it three times. That sounds fierce. And I really want to go to Chili's. I really want to go to Chili's. (laughs) See, uh, that I, yeah, I'm with you. Get some boneless wings. See what happens. (laughs) Boneless Uh, wings and bone. Perfect. Done and done. BB. Okay, we're going to take one last break. When we get back, we have a bunch of really great Twitter questions for you. So we'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. Not Too Deep. With Chris Albeck. Did you know that there's a company that's mastered the science of sparkle? Meet Lightbox Lab Grown Diamonds. They hacked a billion year process to grow stunning lab grown diamond stones in about two weeks. And they're some of the highest quality stones that exist. They're always near colorless, always VS clarity, always a very good cut, and always $800 per carat. They come in three colors too white, blush pink, and soft blue. After they're grown in the lab, they're transformed into gorgeous lab-grown diamond jewelry. It's beauty meets brain. Go to lightboxjewelry.com slash grace and use code grace for $25 off. That's lightboxjewelry.com slash grace. Use code grace for $25 off. Okay, before we get into these Twitter questions, I'm going to ask you the two questions I ask every single guest that is on the podcast. Willem, I think you answered these before, but sometimes your answers will change. Um, (laughs) The first is who, alive or dead, would you most like to throw cold spaghetti at? I love how serious uh, the pregnant pause is for you thinking about this. Got it. (laughs) Okay, go ahead. Trump. Trump? Yeah. I was going to say Trump, but to be different, I'll say... 
Tyga. Okay. Any any mm. reason or just leave it at that? I just think he deserves it. He's not really a fan <laughs> of the homosexuals, so I would just mm. like to let him taste my cold spaghetti. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Uh, the other question I ask every guest is to tell us your worst pants shitting story or close call, but you can only tell us in three words or three small phrases. So mine, for example, is college jogging front lawn. <laughs> yeah, not fun. Um, douche water on stage, dribble, dribble. <laughs> All right, um, yeah. Oh, it was beer though, because it was a, a butt chug. So <laughs> butt chug, butt chug <laughs> on stage, dribble, dribble. Wow, how do you beat that? Oh, okay, wow. um, mine is ramen noodle, <laughs> Walmart, <laughs> white capris. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Wow. That paints a very specific picture. And I thank you for sharing with us. And I uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get into these Twitter questions. Uh, first one is, how did you find your start in makeup and eventually your style for drag? Experimenting. Just, you know, you you look at what a girl's doing something, you're like, let me do that. Yeah. <laughs> and try it. And just like, you experiment. Mm-hmm. I was really lucky. I had a couple of queens like kind of really walk me through it. In the beginning, there was a queen. Her name is Alley Cat. Um, she did, I don't think she does drag anymore, but she really helped me out here in Los Angeles. And then uh, eventually Vivian Panay really walks me through a lot of things too. But I also am like an avid YouTube watcher for makeup mm -hmm. tutorials. So I definitely, right now I'm obsessed with MMM Mitchell. I think he's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next question is, what's the weirdest thing that you've done during quarantine? <laughs> I feel like there could be so many things or maybe nothing. Uh, I defrosted my fridge. You, you what? Defrosted my fridge. Defrosted your fridge? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Was yeah, it frozen? Like the, in the freezer, like the big ice chunk. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got them out. <laughs> I sucked a foot. Okay. On camera or is this private? It was private. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone wants to, someone's asking, I'd like to ask Willem, how is it to always have a front row seat when Laganja does these amazing shows in her backyard? <laughs> oh my God, so good. I love it so much. <laughs> Sometimes I don't have ones though, and um, she throws And when she does have the ones, she uses one of those like grippers to reach it over <laughs> so that we are still social distancing. Oh yeah. Remember That's that was like the first drag show when we, when we were like, this is still cute, you know, novelty. Right. <laughs> it's later. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're still being responsible. Good for you. Yeah, um, response to Trinity is not just a great RuPaul song. That's right. <laughs> okay, Willem and Laganja are casting a slasher film, but the gag is they can only cast three Ru girls each. Who are they casting, and who will be the last one standing? I would do Kim, me, and Ganja. Okay. Oh. And who's the last one standing? Kim, she's the biggest. <laughs> okay. I love a queen that casts herself, so I'm going to say uh, me and Willem, <laughs> and then I would pick to throw a spicy flavor. I'm going to say Peaches Christ. I'll pick the other person who was in our cast. Okay. Because I think she would truly be the last one standing. She's the most wise, and I honestly think we'd all eat Kim to survive. So I feel <laughs> like, you know, it would be Peaches. That's very, you thought it through. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, tips on getting sexy while in lockdown. Any tips? Take your clothes off, put whipping cream in your bedside table and use a whip. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've been doing. All That's while sucking a foot too. That <laughs> sounded like a PSA. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Willem, any tips on getting sexy in, in quarantine? Um, I've been trying to sweat once a day. 
<laughs> Try, you've been trying to what once a day? What? Okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> what one a day. I love it. <laughs> uh, if you had to choose between sickening shoes or sickening hair, which do you choose? I know Willem's answer. I do hair. I knew yeah. it. And I would do shoes. And you would do shoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, without naming names, can you share the craziest story or experience you've had working with another Rue girl? Alyssa Edwards. <laughs> okay. I mean, Shmishmisha <laughs> Schnefferts, without saying her name. Huh. Yeah, I was, I was, it was a unique gig. I did a couple with her that I can't, I couldn't have thought they would end up how they happened. Wow. <laughs> Demons of drag, is that what you're thinking? No, but I heard about that one. Oh, that's right. You weren't on that one. No. Oh, you would have loved it. Was I filled in for her later. Remember? And I had the box over my head. Were you there for that? For which? She she was supposed to be at a tour, but there were there were problems. Uh Uh-huh. She couldn't be at that show. So they had me go down to San Diego and I wore a big fur coat and a box on my head that said Alyssa (laughs) because it was Christmas. I remember those. Jacqueline and Mish drove down to like take pictures with the girls at the meet and greet and they saw me and they wouldn't take pictures. And I was <laughs> gagged. <laughs> Gag. It's, um, always, it's always an outrageous time with her. Let's just say that. It's outrageous. always a, a gaggle uh, of giggles for sure. Yeah. Oh, I, I can only imagine. Um, someone wants to know, how do you come up with your concepts for all of your looks? Hmm. Just mix uh-huh. and match. For me personally, I like to do pieces like for instance, like right now. So then like the next time I wear this, I'd probably wear the skirt with a different top or, you know, Mm -hmm. so I like to mix and match a lot of my looks. And I guess I'm most inspired by um, whatever I can afford. (laughs) That's fair. Yeah. Same, same, same. (laughs) Okay. Last question before we wrap things up. Um, Thoughts on season 12. I love it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I I like that there's no like villain really. So mm-hmm. like you're seeing a lot of just like good, happy people doing drag, competitive, whatever. But like it doesn't, it seems like they're letting the talent shine through without having to force some story mm. here and it's refreshing. Um, yeah, so, so far. I agree. I definitely think it's been one of their better seasons. I find there to be a nice mix of girls that contrast one another. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I really find that it's just been even better because we're stuck in quarantine. I don't know. It's like, for me, I always watch the shows when I'm at the bars. So I'm not truly watching them or truly like, I guess, as invested as I am right now, because there's literally nothing else to do, but actually watch and take in every second. So uh, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm totally a fan of so many of the girls this season and I can't wait to see what happens. I do uh, wish that there was um, a trans girl on this season. I really period. thought it was going to be the year. Oh, yeah. We can't let it go without saying, because like any opportunity that we get for to be interviewed, I mean, the same kind of opportunity should be given to all people in the drag field, and uh, those mm-hmm. girls deserve a chance. So we have to say it on every podcast. It's a new Rue Girl. Agreed. So. Yeah, good for you. Um, now, what, what's next? What's coming up? What's, what's in the works for you? Well, I've been working on my album, Hyconic, for the last two years. Uh, I was supposed to release in July, but obviously due to COVID, I haven't been able to get back to Atlanta uh, to finish it out. Mm -hmm. But I definitely want to be releasing that within this year. And obviously everything that comes with that, music videos, tours, merch, the whole nine yards. Amazing. Can you give any little like teasers on what people can expect from it? Sure. It's uh, definitely all club bangers. Um, I've released two singles so far, Look At Me and Smoke Break. So if you're wanting to truly get a good idea of what to expect, you can listen to those two songs. Um, But as I said before, I'm trying to be the Missy Elliott of drag. So it's hip hop driven, awesome beats, catchy rhymes that hopefully also mean a little something too. And um, just expect it to be very like cannabis centric. I mean, it's iconic. Love it. Love it. That's a good name. Yeah, really great. Thanks. I'm working on the trademark. <laughs> Willem, what's next for you? Um, I'm trying to I write mean, a- not like you don't have 12,000 things that you're working on right now. I this has kind of like forced me to chill a little bit. Um, 
but I'm just working on another book and YouTubes and uh, trying she to- She has properties. Yeah. Amazing. I'm, I'm trying to get like a Palm Springs place like up and running just in time for nice. no one Airbnb. Yeah. Um, and it's got like a drag room in it for people to like get up and drag. So I'm That's working so great. that ready to be open by the summer. It was supposed to be Coachella, but- phew. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's about it. I really Amazing. want to get a million on YouTube. That's my goal this year. Like I'm at 918 and I want the big plaque. It can happen. I believe I in that. Bitch. How big is it? <laughs> the plaque? Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 the size of you, you'll be able to carry it around. You can put it in your back seat. I was gonna put it on a chain. Oh, maybe not. But no, you actually in your you might be able to. I think you could pull that off. Yeah. <laughs> um, before you go, all of our guests, when we do this in person, get a personalized fortune cookie from us to you. But we're going to uh, try and do it digitally. So I think Melissa is going to send you your personalized fortune cookie um, if possible. And maybe you can read your fortunes out loud for us. Willem, you have yours? Okay. Feel yeah. free to read yours aloud. Okay. Mine says... Depending on the wig and where you stand, it may cause someone to think you're a Karen. Act with caution. <gasps> wow. Very ominous and foreboding. Y'all wrote but, these? These are supposed to be personal? They're uh, yeah, within reason. Well, y'all are hateful. Mine just says run. <laughs> 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 I mean, who? I mean, you're you're running your own po potential cannabis parlor. So <laughs> good save maybe. there. Good save there, <laughs> Okay, I'll take it. Great. Okay, now where can everyone find you on the internet and everything that you're up to if they don't already know? I'm at Willem on everything. Uh, yeah. And I'm at Laganja Stranja, except on TikTok because some little teenager took it so i'm the only laganja astranja on tiktok wonderful and thank you again for making time during this weird time to come and podcast with me this was so fun i wish you all luck on everything that you're doing i'm so excited for everything and uh thank you guys for listening and watching we'll see you next time on another episode of not too deep goodbye too deep too deep too deep not too deep with grace helbig not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated, producer Melissa D. Montz, edited by Shireen Lani Yunus, post-production sound by Chris Henry, and an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. <laughs> <laughs>